This is a tool. Its job is simple. Keep my feet dry where there's wet, keep my feet clean where there's dirt, and protect my foot from getting hurt. That sounds pretty simple to do, but eventually they start feeling like poo. They hurt so much and make me cry, I'm going on a journey to find out why. This tool has a very difficult job. In fact, it's the only tool that I use 16 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. My name's Jason, and I enjoy building stuff, taking stuff apart, and understanding how things work. In fact, I enjoy it so much I started my own tool design business where I can bring my ideas to life. As a designer, builder, inventor, I've always had a curiosity with tools. Like how do they work, what makes some better than others, and how to make them better. When I buy boots, I mean tools, I just typically go to the store and buy them off the shelf, open the box, and put them on my feet. I need to do some quick research to find out if there's a better option for my foot. With a quick search of handmade boots near me led me to a small shop called Nick's Handmade Boots. What does handmade really mean? I had to find out for myself. And would you believe it? They're only six miles away from me. So this is where my journey begins. This is Grant. He's the resident expert here and is gonna be helping me along the journey to help me get some comfort with my feet and answer all the questions I have to help me understand what's really going on. Looking at these two boots, they look almost identical to me. Mm -hmm. And I can't understand why off-the-shelf boots hurts my foot mm -hmm. and this one shouldn't. You really don't understand what you're buying until you get inside the boot. If we were to cut this boot in half or look inside, mm -hmm. we would probably see layers of recycled foam material, would be my guess. Um, we'd probably see like a steel shank. So this tool you're telling me has failed on me. I would like to further understand how this happens. The best way is to really understand how it's made, the people that make them, the machines that are utilized, and then honestly, I think you should make a boot. Let's try it out. Let's see if I can make a boot. With the challenge accepted, and to truly understand the boot, I need to build it. So let's see what my choices are. Grant started showing me all the options that I had when selecting a boot. Everything from how soft the sole is, how high the arch, how tall the heel, and how much support I wanted on my ankle, and of course color, shape, size, and I even had several choices with leather. That's a lot to take in at once. This is the tool that I'd like to have for my foot. This is a 10 inch tall, the highest arch they make. Mm -hmm. It has a rough out look to it, but I'd like to make some changes to this one and make it my own. Let's get fitted up. All right. In order to have a properly fitting custom made boot, they had to measure my foot for the width and the length. It turns out I have a really narrow, long foot. They know this by plotting me on this sizing chart that they have. No wonder why off-the-shelf boots hurt my feet. Grant gave me a set of boots to test drive around the shop and see how they feel. And now that I have the blueprints of my exact foot, it's now time to get out into the shop and really see if I can make a handmade pair of boots. The first thing that I noticed when entering the shop was the people. All hard at work, operating what looked to me like vintage machines. Some machines it looks like even made in the 50s. No CNC machines here. I'll be honest, I'm starting to get a little nervous. So I asked him if a noob like me was gonna be able to accomplish something like this. It's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna take you like a long time sewing. Such a long learning curve there. It normally takes two days with 10 guys building a pair of boots. This is gonna be a big uphill battle for a noob like me. The very first thing we need to do to build the boot is select the leather. This will be seen for the entire lifespan of the boot, so I had to make sure I chose wisely. We'll just pick this one, okay. right? Well, this one's it. Grant told me we need to look out for some cosmetic defects in the leather. Things like cuts, tears, or even brands or imperfections. We gotta avoid those. This is quite interesting compared to steel that I'm working with. When yeah. you buy a four by eight piece of steel, you can use every inch yeah. of that. Yeah. With the best parts of the leather selected, it's now time to start stamping out the components that are gonna make the boot. And in order to do this, we're gonna be using a tool called a clicker die. I think a water jet could probably cut that in one right. shot. Yeah. <laughs> Has a sharpened edge that's gonna stamp out the part according to the pattern. <laughs> Okay, flip the hide over. I say we go this way. I'm gonna see this part 
every day sticking on top of my shoe. So I, I gotta pick a good section. See what we got. Oh, well, that is neat. It even punched all the little holes in there. Mm -hmm. If you so don't get this right here, the boot's gonna look funny. That's right. Every pair of boots has what you call a build sheet that tells the operator which side of the leather to cut. Whether rough side out or smooth side out, the operator needs to flip the material over to be able to adjust for that. The operator also has to be responsible for nesting all the components together to get the best usage out of the leather. My boot is a combination of both rough out and smooth leather. I'm choosing to use the rough out leather on areas where it's gonna see a lot of abrasion and wear. The rough out is much better at hiding scratches, rub marks, and even those welding and cutting burns. Get the pull tab. It's pretty crazy that all 20 of these components are gonna make a boot. There's a lot of leather here. It's pretty easy to get parts mixed up, so they all get labeled and tagged. This keeps the confusion down as it makes it through the assembly line. The next process is to skive the leather. The machine feeds the leather into a spinning razor blade, creating that thin edge. Its job is to thin the leather around the edges of the parts. This will allow that eight ounce leather or eighth inch thick material to be overlaid and sewn together without a big lump. Whoa, that sucked fast. Oh no. Time to start over. This is what happens. So I didn't do a very good job and I have to remake the part. But that's okay, we're having fun. I can see how this is a skill set in its own, being able to go around these sharp corners fast, but we'll move on. Some of the leather is a little supple and too soft to be run through the skiver, so the solution is to bend it over a mandrel, grind the edges, giving the same effect just like we did on the skiver. It's now time to start gluing some components together. This is the toe of the boot. The black is what you're gonna see on the outside, and the tan is what's gonna be touching your foot. This glue is super sticky. Just take a look at the table. Pretty cool looking. With all the parts prepped, it's now time to start the assembly. I need to sew the vamp, the upper, and the tongue together. This is Joey. He has one of the hardest jobs in boot making. He is one of only a handful of people that can do this job. This job is so difficult, it generally takes months to learn and years to master. His weapon of choice is a 1950s post head sewing machine. I can tell Joey is a little nervous to have me run his baby. He has this thing dialed in just how he likes it. Joey said that I'm the first person in three years to actually run this machine other than him. Boy, that makes me feel a little nervous. So we need to be started it. Well, you haven't, even, you haven't even punctured the boot, so we might as well just start at the beginning. Again. Start at the beginning again. Oh yeah, we're rocking and rolling. Ah! <laughs> well, not so uh, straight, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> difficulty level 10 on steering this. <laughs> this is what it's supposed to look like. I'll stick to welding, I think. So I've used this fancy tool to scribe a line across the top of the boot so that we can add in this piece of basically reinforcement around the calf. Another fun fact is that this machine was purchased back in 1964 and is still going strong today. Wow, wow. Ah! Okay, so I see now I got the rhythm here. Yeah. Sewing this boot has been one of the most difficult things I've ever tried to do. The combination of the thick leather, the curves, the pinpoint accuracy that the stitch needs to travel on. Wow, no wonder why it takes years to master this. That's gonna let the water in. With a few stitches going, I felt like I was starting to get the hang of it. But upon careful inspection, Joey had to do a little bit of calibrating. Even in boot making, a hammer can still fix everything. I had Joey finish sewing the back part of the boot. He's working on a part called the back stay. It's basically the spine of the boot. It's heavy duty and triple sewn in place. Man, he makes stitching this boot look so easy. Look how perfect those stitches are. Nice and parallel, nice even steps. Truly a master at work. Next step is gonna be putting that Nick stamp, embossing that Nick stamp on the side. This is the stamping machine. This is what puts the logo in the side of the boot. They say that this machine has stamped over half a million boots. That's pretty impressive. So I have to sew this section, which is called the horseshoe. Let's see what we can do. 
It's a race car. It's horrible. <laughs> wah. Wah. After struggling a little bit more, I think I finally got something that kind of resembles a boot. Uh, these are gonna be <laughs> the best, coolest looking boots ever. Okay, so maybe not, but at least I tried. The next part of the boot is called the heel counter. This is what gives the heel its strength. It needs to be soaked in water to give it the flexibility needed to be put into the body of the boot. Once inside the boot, it needs to be pounded flat to get rid of any high spots and get it fitting nice and tight. Oh yeah, much better. To complete the upper, we needed a place for the laces to go. So off to the eyelet machine. Whoa, this thing is cool looking. So oh, that's this is cool. Your <laughs> Okay. You've got your eyelets in here, and then this has an auto feed, so once it punches, it's going to scoot the material over. This machine has a mind of its own and takes a special touch to operate it. Oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Wowie moly. Well, that was quite an adventure. Okay, hooks on one side, loops on the other. <laughs> How's that gonna work? <laughs> With everybody getting a good laugh on my eyelets on one side of the boot, it was now time to move on to the hooks. Glasses on. The hook installer machine is like a puppy dog compared to the eyelet. Much easier to use. It's very original looking, that's for sure. The next step is to find my foot. That's right. We need to find a mold, which they call the last. That's an exact replica of my foot. I think this is what makes Nick so special, is they have a mold that's gonna be able to build the boot around my size and shape of foot. As you can tell, they have a lot of sizes to choose from. So this is what makes this boot really comfortable to wear. With my last selected, it's now time to add the component called the insole. This essentially is what my foot is going to be touching. So I need to fasten it to the last so we can start building off of it. The last is pretty cool. It's designed so that you can nail stuff to it. The insole is pretty wide, so it needs to be trimmed to fit my foot. So a pro can cut this one time. One entrance, one exit. I think I already made 50 cuts already. <laughs> like peeling a potato, I, the way I cut it. One cut or 50 cuts? At least I got it done. On to the next step. I got this boot dunked in water and we're gonna marry my foot to this leather and we're gonna try to stretch the boot around and we're gonna tack it, make the leather match my foot. With the wet boot leather, we're now able to kind of sculpt the boot around the last. And generally this would sit overnight just so the boot can start taking shape for the next day. I installed the nails temporarily because they're going to need to be pulled out later when we do the final stretching of the boot. I give myself a B plus, actually. I think I've screwed up on every process, except for hammering. I'm pretty good at that. The next step in boot making is called lasting. This process is designed to stretch the leather. This is where the leather starts taking on that iconic shape, getting formed around the last. Let me introduce you to Andrew. He's a pro at this, and he's gonna show me how it's done. A lot of people say that lasting is one of the hardest jobs in the whole factory, so I can't wait to try it. How long should this process take, would you say? Oh, uh, maybe 15 minutes a pair. So that's seven minutes Going each. Yeah. Well, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this in seven minutes, but just watching Andrew, look how efficient he is. He can grab a nail, stab it in, and go. Andrew instructed me that I'm trying to stretch the leather so that both the left and the right boot look identical. This is exactly what I'm looking for. The seams need to line up on each side, so things have to be perfect. And I'm not even close. I got four nails in in seven minutes. <laughs> I'm noticing that stretching the leather is taking an incredible amount of strength. And I really need three hands. One to stretch the leather, one to hold the nail, and one to hammer. This is extremely difficult. So I'm gonna pull the nails because we need to glue the layers of leather together. And these are just put there for temporary. Once I got the heel nailed down to the insole, it was now time to start on the toe and start gluing that in place. This is where things start to get tricky. I need to pleat the leather, which means start folding it up kind of like a muffin cup and get all that leather in one spot. 
to be able to pull and stretch that leather nice and tight around the last. Okay, see this is bad. Too much air. I didn't do a very good job cutting the insole and now it's affecting me now. Andrew says it's gonna be okay, so he just sharpens up a knife so we can cut those pleats off nice and flat. With Andrew's approval, I'm now able to continue on gluing the boot and continue stretching the leather. Okay. Part of the boot construction is to fold the leather around the last, and we do that by pounding nails in to hold it securely. Well, I went a little carried away and I pounded the nail all the way through, which then turned it around and made the hook. But part of this design of the boot is we need these nails to come back out. So from here on, all these nails will stay. From here on up, all these nails have to go so that we can flip the leather around. You're probably wondering why I put the nails in in the first place if I just have to take them out. The simple answer is the leather needs to be held in place, stretched while the glue dries. Yeah. Flipping the leather around at the toe is going to allow us to stitch it down to the sole later. I'm applying lots of contact cement to keep things nice and secure. Halfway up the boot, we make two little incision cuts. This is going to allow us to flip the leather a lot easier. Andrew said the next component we need to install is what they call the shank. The shank gives the boot the arch support. It gets glued and nailed right to the midsole. Ah! Weird, sorry. <laughs> oh man. That was awkward. The next step to getting the boot finished is installing the sole. This is Nick. He's gonna be helping me give my boot the traction that it needs. He's responsible for building up the bottom of the boot and getting some rubber on it. I thought we'd start with the sole, but... Oh, this is the midsole? Yes. Okay. This big thick piece of leather needs a tooth on it. So I took it to the grinder. This is gonna give the glue and the dye something to grip to. Nick instructed me to apply this black dye all around the visible parts of the midsole. I had to be really careful not to extend where there's gonna be glue later. I'm ready, the stakes are high. If I get glue and stain together, the whole boot fall apart. Literally, let it dry. Once again, I needed to apply more contact cement. You need to wait about 10 minutes for this stuff to get tacky before you can stick it to something. Nix has figured out the way to keep the squeak out of the boot by applying this little piece of rubber right here to the ball of the foot. Nick told me that the glue was now tacky enough to apply the midsole to the boot. Once we were sure that the midsole was glued down nice and tight, we moved it over to the Landis 5-in-1 machine. Nick said I need to run this roller right around the inside of the boot to make sure that glue is smashed down nice and tight. After that, it was now time to nail that midsole down to the boot. You need to accurately drive 25 pinpoint accurate nails. It was time for Nick to inspect the boot, but he spotted a few nails. So when the insole was placed on there, it didn't get pulled out. And it should have gotten pulled out because it's an insole nail. Right. So it'll get clipped down at finishing, but... Sure, as long as somebody doesn't put their foot in it right now. We need to cut all the excess material off on the midsole. So he said jump back on the Landis and run that thing around the edge. This is a pretty cool machine how it just slices it off. The next step involves sewing the midsole to the boot. Yeah, just when you think 25 nails and a whole bunch of glue isn't good enough, the midsole needs to be sewn on by a master. This is Alex. Alex has been making boots for 30 years, and the machine he's running right now is kind of finicky, and nobody wants me to touch a finicky machine. So Alex is reassuring that that midsole will not come off this boot. <laughs> Thank you. This boot is looking pretty good. The next step is we need to add the rubber to the bottom of the boot. This is the boot's first line of defense with water, traction for your foot, and protecting the leather. NYX offers three different durometers, soft, medium, and hard, and I'm choosing the medium. Have you guys seen my belt grinder, right? I'm comfortable with this tool. <laughs> We definitely need lots of glue. Nick told me that not only does he build new boots, but he also does a lot of resoles. So if your rubber does wear out or need a rebuild, he's the one who does that too. Nix is able to keep all the leather that is formed to your foot, so you don't have to break in new boots anymore. I like this, because it costs a lot less than buying new boots. So start from the heel? Yes, start from the heel. Pound the living daylights out of it just to make sure the glue is stuck good. 
With a little more glue, a little more trimming, it's now time to put the outsole on. Whew, finally. This is a tricky business. You have to start from the toe and roll your way all the way back to the heel, keeping it nice and tight. Okay, and then roll it down. And then put the back down. And then of course, whack it with a hammer. My favorite. Now that the boot has all its layers, it's now time to trim them up and get ready for some sewing. Now it's time to get the sole on for good. This is a Rapid E sewing machine. It's capable of sewing through one inch thick material. Rubber, leather, all of it. All at the same time. And it was made in the 50s. Pretty cool machine. This is Mike. He's the pilot of this beast. Mike's in charge of maintaining these machines and stitching all the boots. If there's a mess up in the construction of the boot at this point, it's most likely garbage. I've been running these machines for 30 years. What we're gonna do is we're gonna secure the outsole to the midsole and the vamp. Okay. That boot you wanna sew is the hardest boot to sew. And me doing it for the first time, I'm probably going to fail. I guarantee you're gonna fail. With that vote of confidence, let's talk about the sewing machine. Have you ever heard the old saying, runs like a sewing machine? I think this is the one they had in mind when they said that. Just look at all those moving components. It's absolutely beautiful. Mike told me that these Rapid E's are the only sewing machines that are capable of sewing through that one inch thick material. They've tried others and none of them will do it. That's pretty neat. It's gonna be a challenge. With Mike's pep talk over, he told me I need to grind the boot to get it ready for sewing. The boot needs a nice smooth edge so that the sewing machine can follow it. Beautiful. That that's that's fantastic. My heart's racing. Dude. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. Right nice, on. Thank nicely you. done. So now the second row, it's the same thing. Okay, here we go. Just when you think one stitch is good enough to hold the sole on, Mike said I had to do one more. I love overkill. Trying to get over that first lug, I was kind of idling there. But it's time to put a heel on. See how that goes. The heel is gonna be made out of two pieces, leather and rubber. This is Chris. He's responsible for setting up the heel of the boot. If you don't set up the heel properly, it can affect the way you walk. You wanna to try to get the center of the cap to the center of the boot, and then off the toe just, just a little bit. With careful instructions from Chris, it was my turn to line it with a gauge, mark it with a scribe, and then start pounding some nails in. The nails we're using are called clinch nails. As you drive the nail in, the tip of the nail hits the last and turns 180 degrees around, creating a staple effect. Remember the bottom of the last with that metal sole on it? Well, that's what that's for. With a few minor adjustments on the grinder and some helpful hints from Chris, we got this boot sitting really nice. With the rubber heel ready to be installed and being watched with careful eyes, I made sure to put enough glue on and all the nails were in the right place. I know it looks like the heel of the boot is really uncomfortable and really tall, but it's really not. When you look at it, the heel is only elevated just a little bit more than the toes. It just looks really high due to how thick the sole is. The arch height is a personal choice, but this high arch is the most comfortable for me. This is the highest arch Nick's boot sells. It's also the most popular. I was curious, so I asked Grant why the high heel was so popular. We have a preference for high arch boots. We really believe in the value of the weight being distributed over this arch stack here. Four layers of veg tan leather here. I think that there's a lot of benefits just for posture, for fatigue, for comfort. What do you think? Now it's time to the grind away. Yeah. Got to sand all this extra meat off. This is Tyler. He's responsible for making the boot look nice. He needs to blend all the edges, cut the logger style heel in the back, and make sure it looks perfect when it leaves the door. And then, has to make one to match exactly. That's quite a difficult task. And just when you think that's not hard enough... How long does this normally take you? I'd say about five minutes of boot, so 
10 minutes for a pair. Okay. If he gets one nick from the belt sander onto the leather, that boot is pretty much scrap. Talk about some pressure here. Lucky for me, I didn't have to start over because Tyler gives excellent grinding directions. That was probably the funnest part so far. I like that grinding. <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. With Tyler and Grant's approval, it was now time to put the finish on the boot. As for the finish, Steven was here to show me how to polish the boot and give it that classy look. Steven said I need to smooth and blend the leather, then apply a nice brown dye over all the tanned parts, and then blend the dye in on the wheel. I opted to go with a black boot with a brown sole. I think it looks really nice. Combine this with the brown stitching, this boot really pops. Nyx doesn't offer anything like this. This is special to me. One final buff with some beeswax, and this foot tool is looking nice. I like the brown heel stack, because you can really appreciate all the layers that are in this boot. So not only has this been stitched on, nailed on, and glued on, we're gonna screw it on. Finally, another tool that I'm good at, the screw gun. Nick must be really worried about the sole falling out, because we have to add 10 more screws. I love it. There's one more piece of leather I have to install, and that goes inside, and it's called a sock liner. Its main purpose is just to smooth out the inside of the boot. Before this boot is ready to wear, I need to fix some critical mistakes that I had made earlier. Not only did I put too many eyelets in, I put them in backwards. How silly is that? That's okay, they're pretty easy to remove with a punch. Nix is set up to remove eyelets anyway, for the people who wear them out. To install new ones, I'm going to do it by hand on this cute little arbor press. Then punched a couple new holes that I missed on the machine. And then I added a few hooks that were missing on the other side. I just pushed those through the existing eyelets. Besides a couple rogue eyelets that got away from me, I think it looks pretty good. That way I can claim it's truly handmade. Now it's finally ready to add the laces. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Grant added a kilty, which is basically a false tongue. It helps keep the laces from wearing into the true tongue of the boot, making it last longer. With the laces in, there's only one thing left to do. Let's have a laugh. I made the right boot and the boys made the left. My stitching is bad, the eyelets don't line up, and it leans hard to the left. It's not looking too great, but let's see how it feels. The first thing that I noticed is just how tightly the boot fits around my entire foot. I didn't think it'd be this comfortable without any foam or padding inside. Grant told me that when the foam breaks down on an off-the-shelf boot, that your foot has places to wiggle and move around, which causes all that discomfort. But with an all-leather construction, the leather will eventually form around my foot, just adding to the comfort level. Grant said this should take around 100 hours or so to really get the boot broken in and really feeling nice and comfortable. I'm extremely happy with the value of these boots. At $525 for a custom handmade pair of boots that I'm going to use for years and years, possibly even decades, that's a lot of value. I know these boots cost more money than an off-the-shelf boot, but it's the tool that I use the most. Why not treat myself to something that fits right, is built better, and is more comfortable, and definitely looks good doing it. So after making my pair, Joey, Andrew, Nick, Alex, Mike, Chris, Tyler, and Steven said that they'd make you guys a pair too. That they'd make 500 just like mine, except without all the mess ups. So this will be a limited run of the black boots with the brown sole and the brown stitching. All 500 boots will get the genuine Fireball logo branded into the side. How cool is that? If you can't make it into the store to get fitted, Nyx has an online fitment chart that you can send your measurements in and you can order from anywhere in the world. You can find the link at the Fireball Tool website or go directly to Nyx Boots. I'll leave both in the description below to find them. This journey was quite exciting. I learned so much. I met new people, learned new tricks, and overall, got a great tool for my foot. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. That's a wrap. Let's uh, call it there. Job well done.